Well, good morning and welcome to Good Samaritan Church in Pinellas Park, Florida. As we always say, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Uh, I'm Pastor Jen and you are welcome here if you identify as male or female or a little bit of both. You are welcome here if you are documented or undocumented or a little bit of both. You are welcome here if you are suffering because of an addiction, yours or someone else's, or you are in healing and recovery from an addiction or its effects, or a little bit of both. You are welcome here if you Zoom or you don't Zoom. And on that note, I want to extend a special welcome to those who join us later in the week watching our recorded service on YouTube. We are grateful for whatever ways you can join us and be the church and worship with us. And now I'd like to invite you to join me in our song of welcome. This is a, a song that we sing to remember the kind of people and the kind of church that we want to be even as we're still a work in progress. Let us sing. <laughs> unmute your mics with me and we're going to shout out together the peace of Christ be with you. Are you ready? The peace of Christ nice be with you. And also with you. Friends, we remember that Jesus said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. And so this morning we light this candle to remember that Jesus, the light of the world, is the host of our time together, even here virtually. And now friends, let us be called to worship. This morning we remember that when we gather for worship, we do so not just with the living, but also with those who have gone before us, with that great cloud of witnesses. So let us now be called to worship. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. 
In the blowing of the sea breezes and embrace of humidity, when we step out the door, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and the gray rolling thunderstorms, we remember them. In the glimmer of light upon the water and the birds across the sky, we remember them. In the parade of faces at polling places and the quiet stillness of our homes, we remember them. In this era of pandemic, when all life is ever so precious, we remember them. When we recall the former ease of gathering together, we remember them. When we find ourselves moved by a twinkling smile or eye, we remember them. When we hunger for community as much as for food, we remember them. When we are bone weary and need a heroine's strength, we remember them. When we have new victories to celebrate, we remember them. When we are broken hearted and searching for faith, we remember them. When we are struggling with unanswered questions, we remember them. When we tread the solid ground they prepared, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us, for we truly do remember them. Friends, let us join in our uh, song, God's Love Endures Forever. It'll be up on the screen. The scripture reading comes this morning from the, the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Now, the book of Revelation is a strange book full of dreams and visions of things that can't be expressed in purely earthly terms. So listen now to this vision of what, what the gathered, beloved, worshiping community will look like. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we come and we are listening yet again for your still speaking voice to speak, speak your word fresh into our lives this morning. We are yearning for it, hungry for it. And so we pray that the words of my mouth, of all of our mouths this morning and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing to you. And where we depart from your spirit, oh God, may that quickly fall away. Amen. Well, have you ever had a piece of clothing or, or maybe a shoe 
that grows so worn in a spot, so thin, that you start to feel or to see the knee or the elbow or, or the toe on the other side, as if there's hardly any barrier at all between that little bit of skin and the world. Our son Jacob's birthday is coming up and I remember that first day when I reached my hands into his isolate, my whole body was aching to hold him. And just this thin piece of plexiglass and these masses of tiny little wires and tubes, that was all that was keeping me from being able to do that. I've heard some of you talk about going to visit friends or loved ones in facilities when they're under quarantine during this COVID time. You've told me how you've sat outside windows, outside just a, a thin pane of glass or a thin mesh screen, with that being the only thing that's separating you from the one whom you love and you want to connect with. And I know in the past when we used to do such things, some of you used to visit people in the hospital and you'd have to gown up and you'd have to put on gloves and then you'd squeeze someone's hand through that glove, this thin layer of nylon through which you can both feel so much and so little all at once. And I know all of us during this time have grown accustomed to greeting each other these days through a computer. This odd experience of being in each other's living rooms while at the same time far away. Or we greet each other in person and we're wearing a mask, this thin piece of paper separating us from seeing one another's smiles. Some of our good SAM members and I waited outside Bayfront Hospital for such a thin space earlier this week. We were looking for just a brief little moment to express our love and our well wishes from a distance for our pastor emeritus, Harold Brockus. He was being transferred between facilities and we knew there would be just about two to three minutes when he'd be wheeled out from the hospital before he got into uh, the van that would transport him. And so we were trying to find just this tiny little thin opening to see him. We are familiar with thin places. We're familiar with experiences of nearly touching, nearly seeing, but not quite fully, at least not yet. Back before the Christians, the Celts had a tradition of celebrating Samhain at this time of year. It's a festival at the end of the harvest right on winter's eve. And they believed that this time of year opened up a thin place between those on the other side of the grave and those on this side of it. Now it's unclear historically if the Christian observance of All Saints Day and All Souls Day was just yet another Christian appropriation of a pagan holiday, or if it simply developed alongside and coincidentally happened to, to occur at the same time of year. Either way, Halloween, all, all Hallows Eve, it comes from an old English word, hallowed, which means holy or sanctified. And throughout the scriptures, holy places or holy ground, they are usually places between heaven and earth. They are these thin places between God and humans, between our past, our present, and our future. And often they're accessed by dreams or visions, by memories or even hopes. And often these holy places or these holy moments, they remind us that in actuality, we always live in that thin place between heaven and earth. We just aren't always aware of it. So today on this All Hallows Eve, on this All Saints and All Souls weekend, I invite you to step with me into that thin space. Step with me into that holy place between heaven and earth. And I want you to feel around, look around in this thin space. You know 
what your body and your soul have been aching for, longing for, wanting to touch or hold, hear or have in their fullness. This is the space where love just thins out that distance between us and what our heart's deepest cravings are. Whether that craving is for a loved one who has crossed the threshold from life into death, or for something as big as peace on earth. Here in the thin places, we come so close to what we long for. We, some, we come so close we can almost touch, taste, see, hear them. I know so many of us have lost something major this year or someone this year. Maybe you've lost a loved one or maybe you've lost a job or even a way of life that just felt normal and whole. Maybe you've lost some financial security or housing security or food security. Maybe you've lost some hope or maybe at times you've even lost some of your sanity. I invite you to step into this thin place where all is not lost, where comfort draws near to us, where God pulls in close to us. This place where the dividing walls fall to the ground, even the wall of death. Step into that space and feel the embrace of the divine this morning. Last December, New Testament scholar N.T. Wright wrote a piece for Time magazine. And he begins, one of the central stories of the Bible, many people believe, is that there is a heaven and an earth and that human souls have been exiled from heaven and are serving out their time here on earth until they can return. Sometimes it feels like that, doesn't it? Like we've been exiled from life, at least life as it's meant to be, and we're living in this reality full of grief and heartache, homesickness and suffering. Some of us, quite frankly, have so given up on humanity that we're willing to see earth as just a waiting room for heaven. How could this place, this people, possibly be redeemed? But Wright goes on to argue that the followers of the Jesus movement saw heaven and earth, God's space and ours, if you like, as two twin halves of God's good creation. And rather than rescuing people from the latter in order to reach the former, the creator would finally bring heaven to, and earth together in this great act of new creation completing the original creative purpose by healing the entire cosmos of its ancient ills. Wright says they believed that God would then raise people from the dead to share in and indeed to share God's stewardship over this rescued and renewed creation. And he argues they believed all this because of Jesus. They believed that the resurrection of Jesus or that with the resurrection of Jesus, this new creation had already been launched. Jesus embodied in himself that, that perfect fusion between heaven and earth. In Jesus, therefore, the ancient Jewish hope, and, uh, hope had come true at last. Right? Says the point was not for us to go to heaven, but for the life of heaven to arrive on earth. And he highlights that Jesus taught his followers to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? There was this sense in the early Jesus movement that the thin places were getting thinner. That rather than us trying to break into heaven, God was and is bringing heaven and breaking in to earth. I remember that first time they opened Jacob's isolate and they let me pick him up and hold him to my chest. 
with the help of, of respiratory ther therapists. Um, but I remember that nothing could have felt more right, more whole, more healing in that moment. The early Jesus movement had this sense that this is what had happened with Jesus, that God had pulled us in close, skin to skin, that heaven and earth had fused together and that someday that fusion, that reunion, that restoration, that reconciliation, that it would be complete. The author of Revelation and of our, our passage this morning accesses that thin and thinning place with this elaborate vision of what it will be like when heaven and earth are reunited. And the author envisions that it will be this incredibly wide, diverse place where not only are we reunited with loved ones on the other side of the great divide of death, but we will also be reunited with all those on the great divide of hate. Here enemies are reunited. Here peoples of various cultures, languages, origins, and skin colors various periods of history are brought together. Here humanity is reconciled, all of humanity, even those with political signs in their yard or on their cars or flying out of their truck beds that make us feel unloved or unseen, endangered or outraged. Everyone, all of humanity will be reconciled. And in this vision, we all come together and, and love opens our eyes to see each other clearly. It's this beautiful vision of dwelling in a land and dwelling in a community where God is in charge, not presidents or kings or emperors or Supreme Court justices, God is in charge. The one who knows our worth and the worth of every life is the one in charge. Can you imagine our good God overwhelming and overflowing with love? The one that we meet in Jesus, the one who puts the last and the least first. Can you imagine this is the one in charge and no one is going hungry or thirsty? No one is lacking for food or water. No one is lacking for love or community, health or security. No one is suffering. The tears are all dried up, wiped away, comforted. Heaven has come to earth. Can you imagine? There is this moment in the middle of this vision where a conversation happens. One of the elders asks the author of Revelations, who is recounting the vision, who are all of these heavenly creatures? And the author doesn't know for sure. So they turn the question right back to the elder. I don't know, you tell me, you're the one who knows. And we expect to hear the elder say, oh, well, these are all the saints. These are all the sinless, superhuman people who did amazing things in their lives. Who've been a part, uh, and who haven't been a part, excuse me, of creating all the pain and the brokenness of the world. That's what we expect to hear the elder say. But instead, the elder says, they are the ones who have come through the great ordeal. These heavenly creatures aren't saints. They're survivors, and they've been welcomed in by grace, and now they can participate in this new community. I don't know about you, but this vision, strange as it is, it gives me so much hope. Though I know that I'm quite privileged by the standards of the world, life certainly has felt at moments recently like quite an ordeal. Maybe it has for you as well. None of us are getting it 100% right. Not in our COVID precautions, not in our choices about money, not in our health or fitness, and likely not on our ballots either. 
And likely all those loved ones whom we will be remembering today, likely they didn't get it 100% right either. We often memorialize the dead by whitewashing over our memories of them, erasing the ugly and the painful. We do that just as we do it when we pin all of our hopes on our favorite political leaders and put them up on this pedestal despite the fact that they are flawed human beings and none of them are the Messiah, the Savior. But in this vision, the elder makes no pretense about heavenly beings being anything other than human. These beings, no doubt, like most of us, have some good and some bad inside of them. And yet, they've been clothed in grace and they've been invited to participate in this new creation. Now, at the very beginning of the book, the author of Revelations, he identifies himself as the Apostle John. And he says that he's writing from the island of Patmos, where we know John was imprisoned. John had lost so much by the end of his life. His teacher, Jesus, had been crucified. Most of his friends and fellow followers had been crucified or killed as well, tortured. But John seeks out the thin places in those prison walls surrounding them. And not just in the physical walls around him, but also in the walls around his mind and soul as well. And somehow he manages to see through them into this vision we get in the book of Revelations. Somehow he finds a way to see hope, to see love triumphing to see his friends and his teacher still with him. And he trusts that nothing, nothing will be able to hold him back from God's love or hold God's love back from him. Nothing will keep heaven from coming on earth. So today, friends, I, I invite you to bring all of your grief, bring all of your heart's longings, and step into that thin space. And once you're there, reach out for what is on the other side of that threshold because friends, it is closer than it seems. God is closing the gap. Heaven is starting to emerge here and now, even as sometimes it feels like all hell is breaking loose. This week, friends, the world may grow a little dark and a little scary, but don't lose sight of that vision. There is a place in the midst of all of this chaos and brokenness, in the midst of all this grief, where heaven and earth are already touching. There is a place among all these prisons we've built for ourselves where love has already worn away through suffering and into the fullest life. There is a spot right here, right now, where a tether binds us together, living and dead, liberal and conservative, people from here and from there. And we know that place where heaven and earth meet. We know that place by the name Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I'm going to give us just a moment to digest that, and then we'll come back together for a little wonder time. Well, let's go ahead and come back together. And I invite you to wonder with me about these thin places in life. Um, maybe as you've been grieving, either grieving the loss of a loved one or, or grieving the loss of, of something else during this COVID time, maybe you have found some of those thin places where heaven and earth come close together. I wonder if you've experienced that. I definitely have experienced that. Um, Pastor Jen, thank you for this, this message this morning. It's, um, I'm finding that, that that thin veil between what I want and what is um, grief and joy and all of these things in my life does feel very thin. And in some of that time, that, that thinness, though, that, that's where it also feels uh, a little bit scary. 
not knowing when that veil breaks, will it tip towards a side of despair? Um, so I, I thank you for this, for lifting up also that there's hope that whether, whether that side breaks towards despair in this earthly realm, um, that there's hope beyond this. And thank you. Well, today we'll be naming some of the people that we have, um, who have died over the last year and who we at least physically feel separated from. Um, one of those folks was our, our longtime <laughs> clerk of session, Rich Feigl. And man, I have had some thin moments this year where the memories have just been so powerful um, and so vivid um, that it really feels like Rich is still here with us. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Hi, it's Rebecca. I am blessed to work at Tampa Journal where it's my job to visit the thin places basically on a daily basis. I enter these sacred spaces where families are grieving someone who is actively dying and we end up eulogizing them while they're still there. We'll play a favorite hymn or a favorite song of theirs. They'll share uh, embarrassing stories as well as beautiful stories and just you can feel something different uh, in the air and it's it's sacred I don't have a better word for it thank you Rebecca yes I imagine as a chaplain you experience that a lot <laughs> are there any others um Joel's in St. Anthony's Hospital and um the he was on a general ward the first day and now he's on the neurological on the stroke unit because he had a small stroke. But the first day we had this wonderful nurse from India who, as she talked to us and I said, she asked us if we wanted a chaplain. And I said, oh, I remember the chaplain I met last time we were here. Joel was a hospital chaplain. Turns out she's a nun. Hmm. And she came over last night to his new unit to visit him, laid hands on him and prayed a blessing over him, which was so precious. And I'm gonna send a photo to some of you who, whose uh, addresses I have. So, and Joel, he, he thought he was doing CPE in the hospital. And he said, Noel, I want us to make a date to have all these wonderful people over to our house. He said, I've, I've really fallen in love with them. So can we figure out a day when we can have them all over to our house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still <Okay>. Joel. <laughs> what an opening of heaven there. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Noel. Let us be in prayer. Oh God, on this week when our country is anticipating so much turmoil and possibly even violence that businesses are boarding up their windows. In this year, when we have experienced so many losses, both big and small, and when our country and our world has experienced so much loss of life, we come to you. We come to you, uh, the healer. We come to you, the comforter. We come to you, the God who reaches out through the, sp the thin spaces, who brings heaven here and now and invites us to participate in that. We come to you this morning. We pray that you would be drying the tears and wrapping yourself around those who are grieving. And this week, as we do, uh, this time of year, each year, we lift up the names of those uh, of our loved ones who have died in the last year. Terry Ahern. Jacob Butler. Rich Feigl. Bruce Fullerton. Joanne Goforth.
Jennifer Kazar. Paul Kohler. Norman Kessline. Alexis Marion. Dorothy Morton. Matthew Olson. Edna Smith. Robert Shuros. Carolyn Stevenson. Marvin Thorne. Charles Wichard Jr. Sandra Woodard. Well, friends, I invite you to uh, continue in your giving and investment uh, to Good Sam. Um, I invite you to give out of what God has given to you. Uh, our mission at Good Sam is to build the beloved community, and that has looked very different <laughs> during this pandemic time. Um, but we continue to listen for uh, the needs of our community, to listen for where those thin places are, where God is trying to bring uh, heaven on earth and to join in and be a part of that work. And, and your gifts and your investment are part of what allow us to keep being the church in so many ways. Uh, as we consider the gifts we will send in this, this week, I invite you to uh, listen to Robin uh, sing Amazing Grace for us. God, we pray that you would take these gifts that we received this week and use them to create thin places of beloved community uh, throughout Pinellas County, throughout our country, throughout our world. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Well, friends, I want to invite you to our virtual communion table. Uh, everyone is welcome here, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are welcome here. This is the table of God's grace and God's love. This is one of those thin spaces for us when we get to taste a little bit of, of heaven. Um, and so I invite you to go in your house, if you haven't already, and find um, some form of <laughs> bread or carbohydrate or whatever you have, um, even cereal will work, <laughs> um, and then find some sort of beverage, uh, juice or water or whatever you have as well. Well, friends, we have uh, the tradition when we come to this meal of first being reconciled uh, to each other and to God. And so I invite you to join me. Um, we'll begin with just a few moments of silent uh, confession and prayer of reconciliation, and then I will close that time. Oh God, we confess that your thin spaces are all around us, but we don't always look for them. We're not always aware of them. What we long for, what we yearn for is so much closer than we often think. Uh, forgive us sometimes for uh, not having enough faith that you can and are and will bring heaven here on earth. Thank you for accepting us as we are, uh, 
as human beings with all of our faults and flaws and for clothing us in your grace. Amen. Friends, remember the good news from our passage this morning, that those who were gathered, those heavenly creatures, they weren't saints. They were just everyday people like you and I, who had survived the great ordeal and who were welcomed in with grace. Hear that and take heart. And now let us pray over our communion meal. God, we remember how at the beginning you created and you called it good and you do, drew creation close to you. You created the thinnest of space. And yet we wanted to do our own thing, go our own way. We had other ideas, ideas other than your way of love. Oh, you sent us so many prophets and brave people to try to show us where the thin places are, to put us back on that way of love but we just wouldn't listen. Or if we did, it was only for a time. And then we were back trying to find our own way again. So finally you sent us, Jesus, your own son, the thin place between heaven and earth where heaven and earth touch are fused together. And in him we saw what is and could be possible in him, we saw the work you had begun of bringing heaven to earth. But still, we would not listen. And so he followed love. He chased after bringing that heaven to earth all the way through death and back again. That we might know how much you are for us how much you want beloved community to transform this world we live in. And so that we would know the way to get there. And so we pray that your spirit would pervade this bread we break and this cup we share, that as it enters our body, we might experience it as your grace and your love pouring into us that it might give us a taste of heaven, that it might be a thin place, and that it would send us out into the world to create thin places and beloved community wherever we go. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, friends, we remember how on the night of Jesus' arrest and betrayal, he was gathered in a meal in an upper room with his friends and he created a thin place there, a taste of beloved community. He took bread and broke it saying, this is my body broken for you, take and eat all of you. And in the same way after supper, he gave thanks and blessed the cup and said, this is the new covenant poured out in my blood. As often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Friends, this is the bread of life. And this is the cup of love and the cup of grace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. And as you do, uh, scroll through the faces on your screen and see who you see joining us in this meal. Well, let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Jean, would you put that up on the screen? Thanks be to God 
for life and grace poured out, for hope renewed, for love everlasting, for the, a feast that feeds the world and builds the beloved community, for the word that calls the world into being and us beings into the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we have just a few announcements this week. The first is that our food pantry could use ramen noodles, canned vegetables, and soups. Those can be dropped off um, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 9 a.m. to noon. Also, um, if you are feeling uh, anxious about the election or the day following, if you are grieving the results and needing a peaceful space to bring your concerns to God, to your Good Sam community, uh, we invite you to join us for an election vigil. Um, Jeremy and I will be alternating hosting this time. And this is just a drop-in time uh, where you can come into this Zoom room with us and uh, we will have uh, peaceful music, peaceful images. You can put your concerns in the chat box and about every 10 minutes or so you'll hear a prayer or scripture. Um, so if you're just needing some way to kind of center yourself and be with others, we invite you anytime uh, 7 to 9 p.m. on November 3rd or 7 to 11 a.m. on November 4th uh, to come into this Zoom room with us for a bit. Uh, a reminder that we've got our beloved community groups going. Um, Jeremy is leading one. Oh, that should say Friday, <laughs> Friday mornings at 11 a.m. Uh, and I am leading one uh, Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, those have started, but there is still um, an opportunity to get involved if you'd like to. Um, so you can um, just email Jeremy or I or the church office if you'd like to participate, or there's a way to register on the church website. Also, if you're um, starting to get a little anxious about the holidays and the loneliness and isolation you might be feeling, um, you are not alone and we want to invite you um, on Thanksgiving Day for an hour if you need to hear other voices or eat with someone else that you can jump on Zoom with us during that time as well. We also have our first in-person event coming up. So mark your calendars. Um, we're gonna try to be very, very social distance and careful at this, um, but we're going to have a Thanksgiving concert out at um, Turtle Crawl Point. This is at the War Veterans Memorial Park right next to the Veterans Hospital. Um, if you've not been, it's a beautiful spot with a 270 degree view. And we have a cellist coming to play live music for us. So we will, um, sit very spaced out and listen to music and watch the sunset um, and just take in the beauty of that spot. And now friends, I invite you to go in peace. I invite you to look for the thin spaces, the places where God is bringing heaven to earth and join in and participate. And I invite you to remember on this All Saints Day, tomorrow All Souls Day, that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that our beloved community, the body of Christ, is not just us, but is all those who have gone before us as well. Friends, if you have any more joys or concerns you'd like to share, we invite you to stick around for our fellowship time for about 10 minutes after service here. And now will you say with me, ready? Shalom. 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 Peace. Peace. Go in peace, my friends.